Optimism is crashing. The OP token went down by 30% roughly versus Bitcoin in the last month. And we made money from this yet again. On the 1st of May, we had a premium update at thebitcoinstrategy.com, the premium membership. We had an update how we were shorting the OP token. Bitcoin looks healthy. I opened a Firecoin and Optimism short. And then four days afterwards, also a tutorial on how to open up a position where we can make money from a falling relative valuation of optimism to Bitcoin. Now, why are we seeing this decline over here? It's because of an unlock. Investors and core contributors now have access to their tokens. The circulating supply of the OP token went from 300 million to more than 600 million overnight. And of course, whenever there is a strongly increasing supply and demand doesn't match that, you see a falling price. Now, since the price already went down that much, does it mean that we're now going to stabilize versus Bitcoin. I think probably not just yet. And that's because the circulating supply more than doubled and probably everybody that got the unlock made available yesterday didn't yet sell. So the decline that we have seen so far are probably from people just like us that have shorted the OP token. And now with the unlock hitting the market, we do see a first few nervous hands covering their short. The OP token today is going up slightly. But we have seen something very similar with our cake short, where we bet on the pancake swap token declining versus BNB and versus Bitcoin. Over there, we also had a roughly doubling of the circulating supply because a staking program expired. So you could lock up your cake tokens and after one year you had more than double of your cake tokens back if you deposited very early on. And then when after one year that expired, this is what we saw with the cake price. And I covered this short, unfortunately, too early. So I opened it over here and I covered it roughly over here. A 27% decline. A similar drop that we currently see in optimism. But afterwards, we saw an additional decline of 50% roughly. Now, will this play out one-to-one -one with optimism again? Nobody can say for sure, but I'm not yet convinced that all of the potential selling pressure has already hit the market. I stay in my short position. I wait for further declines because time is actually on our side. It does not mean that all of optimism's inflation has completely stopped. Look at this, right? We are currently at our 650 million, but after one year, this will be up to roughly 1 billion. So another 40% or so inflation within one year. So there's really no rush to cover the shot. We can simply just keep this open even for another year. There are a lot of layer one competitors, a lot of smart contract platforms that all fight to be the next Ethereum, to be the cheap Ethereum. And probably one year from now, we will even have newer entrants again. The new trend kit in town so to speak so to me it's unclear that optimism will be able to grow its demand as quickly as its unlock the unlocked supply that will increase what's circulating around we have to think about this from a fundamental perspective it's the same for the stock market it's the same for cryptocurrencies very few tech stocks are able to outperform the nasdaq very few altcoins are able to outperform bitcoin so the safest way to generate alpha, to generate returns that go beyond just Bitcoin is to use Bitcoin as collateral and to open short positions on altcoins that tend to underperform. There's a very high likelihood when you take an altcoin and you bet on falling prices of the altcoin that you're actually going to make money from it. It's easier to find the bad performing asset and make money on its decline than it is to find the needle in the haystack, the one or two assets that might be able to outperform. The thing that most people try to do is they try to pick maybe even a portfolio of altcoins. They buy five altcoins and they think that all of those altcoins or most of them will outperform Bitcoin. It's very unlikely simply because of the return distribution. The most profits go to very few players. It's true for crypto, it's true for stocks. 
products. If you're going to buy a product from a company, you're going to buy whatever is the best offer on the market, right? So you don't care about the middle range. You maybe take the cheapest or you take the best, but everything in the middle has to struggle to just survive. If you have a portfolio of stocks and you take maybe five stocks or you've got a portfolio of altcoins, you take five altcoins, the likelihood is very high that you don't catch those very few winners. So it's easier to simply just stick with what the benchmark is, buy a Nasdaq ETF, maybe QQQ, and then be very selective for the stocks where you do think they have the chance to be among the top 10%. Only buy the things that you expect to outperform. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to get into this idiosyncratic risk game. You do take on more risk by buying an individual asset versus a whole basket of asset. And that additional risk should be compensated with more return. And when you just buy the average, you're not going to get that compensation. And so this is the most straightforward way in crypto as well. Simply buy Bitcoin, simply buy Ethereum if you like Eve, and then be very selective on what altcoins to purchase. Be very active in its trading, ride those waves in the altcoins. And if you want to diversify on underperformance, open several positions that short altcoins that you're bearish on because maybe the supply increases very rapidly as you've just seen with optimism. And how to set all of this up? What kind of positions make sense? How to diversify risk? If you want to learn more about this, if you want to know what kind of positions I open, there are plenty of videos every two or three days published at thebitcoinstrade.com. There are also mindset and strategy videos, tutorials around backtesting, around DeFi, around technical analysis. There's even a dedicated course just on technical analysis. And of course, we've also got dedicated telegram channels where we discuss the current best opportunities in the market. So if you've got a crypto portfolio of at least 5k, then I'm very sure by using premium, the whole thing will pay for itself. The alpha will be high enough that you won't even have negative cash flow out of this. And on top of that, you hopefully also learn a lot of things, concepts that go beyond the content here of the YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched it yet, feel free to check out the video on the premium membership. It's over here. Looking forward to see you in that video and thanks for watching this one. Bye bye.